All right, so more upgrades on the Razor Quad. This rig is pretty old. It's uh, gone through my daughter, who is now a teenager and too old to ride it. And then now my son has been riding it. He's younger. And probably, God, eight years ago, I did an upgrade on this Razor. I built this battery tray, as you can see here. Um, upgraded it from 24 volt to 36 volt using these, what are these, 12 amp hour batteries? Yeah, 12 amp hour, hour batteries, so 36 volt. Upgraded the controller to a 36 volt controller. You know, pretty standard stuff. Um, you know, many, many folks have done that particular upgrade. Put a little bigger tires on it, as you can see. And I spaced them out. They, they got some wheel spacers in there. They give it an extra two inches of, uh, of uh, width to handle the extra speed and, and torque. Well, now my son has been riding it and he has exceeded the uh, you know performance that the that the quad can can dole out. So it's time for a motor upgrade. So this is the stock motor that comes on this version of Razor Quad. It's a 24 volt, 300 and what is this? 350 watt. Problem with this motor? A couple problems. One is it's tiny. Right, it's just a tiny little motor. Um, it's got this gear reduction drive on it that, you know, obviously gears down the, the motor's uh, output RPM. Then they kind of put a big, you know, sprocket on, on the end of that. Um, so I was previously overvolting this motor with the 36 volt system. It's designed for 24 volts. That gave it some more power and, or excuse me, gave it some more speed. And then I geared it down to give it better torque uh, with this larger sprocket. This is a 54 tooth sprocket. And the one that's originally on it is smaller than that. I don't know what size it is. Um, but my son is, um, you know, he's advanced now. He's an advanced rider, if you will. And he's outgrown this. So it's time to upgrade this motor. So this is the old motor, right? And it's time to upgrade this to the new motor, which is here. So here's the new motor. It's a 36 volt, 500 watt with a... Uh, registered uh, uh, RPM of 2,500, okay? I currently have a, so the Razor Quads, at least this version, run an eight millimeter chain, and I've done some work on the chain. I can, uh, I have a, a, a chain tool that can, you know, disassemble and add new links as necessary. Um, and so it's got an eight millimeter, 10 tooth pinion on it now, combined with this 54 tooth pinion, and these tires, which are 13 inches tall, and the RPM of 2,500 RPM, put it right at about 18 miles per hour. It would be the, the speed that is calculated based on you know, the full uh, RPM of, of this motor at full, at full speed. That's probably a little too fast, so I'm likely gonna have to mess with the gearing a little bit, um, but you know more to come on that. Okay, so for the motor upgrade, um, you know, there's, there's a couple challenges here. So number one is this existing bolt pattern that the Razor Quad has is obviously designed for this tiny little motor over here. The new motor has a much larger footprint, right? It's a, it's a wider motor this way, and then it has a different bolt pattern down here. Um, something else that, that what I've done in, in kind of my, my approach here that I wanted to take into account, let me show you, is the position of the pinion. So this motor, obviously the output shaft of this motor, you can kind of see it here. Center line for the output shaft would be right here. With the gear reduction box and the pinion, the pinion on, the pinion on, on this motor is actually, you know, more forward, up, and to the left, right, from, from what a normal output shaft would be. So the problem over here with this motor is if I just were to set this motor on here, right, you know, there's, there's a number of problems here. One is... The pinion geometry is completely different uh, from the original because the original has a gear reduction on it. It puts all it puts that pinion kind of up and to the left. And so what I did was, um, well, I did a couple things. Um, so I, I need a bracket. So I built a bracket, and I need a bracket that will accommodate this ex existing bolt pattern. And then I need that bracket to uh, reposition the new motor and the pinion on the new motor so that I have a, the right chain line, the right chain line geometry that the original motor uh, had. And the reason I want to do that is I am trying my hardest to keep the original chain guard.
hey, I don't want to have to customize and fabricate a, a, a new chain guard for this thing. Um, I can, but I, you know, I just don't really want to mess with that. So it's easier to keep the original geometry. And that helps you in a couple ways. So one is if I have raised the motor up in order to meet, to get the pinion in the same location that it was originally, it helps me with some of the clearance challenges in this space. So a number of folks that have done motor upgrades, they, they run into a problem where the motor is too wide and it ends up interfering with the brake. There are some things you can do here. You can, you know, space this brake out. You can flip this hub around. You can move the brake, you know, caliper. There's stuff that can be done over here, but you know, I don't need to do that, you know, basically, you know, if I, I want to get this pinion angle uh, and a pinion geometry exactly how it was stock so that I can reuse the chain guard, and that will then afford me enough room to, to clear the caliper. Now, I did, I did do one slight modification here for the, for the sprocket. Normally, this sprocket, so there's this, this axle flange here, that, this four-bolt flange, which is what houses the sprocket. Normally, the sprocket is on the inside of this flange. I did take the sprocket and flipped it, so it's now on the outside, right? So that gave me, I don't know, a few millimeter here of additional of additional clearance, right? So what I did was I built this bracket. Let me show you that. So here's this bracket, okay? It's pretty straightforward. It's basically two pieces of quarter-inch steel, um, one piece with the bolt pattern. And you can see my crappy paint job here. Um, one piece with the bolt pattern that matches the existing uh, bolts, and I'll just kind of slap it on here so you can see that. Okay, so one, one plate of quarter-inch steel matches this bolt pattern. Another plate of quarter-inch steel that matches the bigger bolt pattern, not only um, larger you know, bolt pattern, but also larger diameter uh, bolts for the new motor. And then this plate uh, is forward and to the left, and it's elevated, right? And so I did all the, the math and the measurements on this, it puts the pinion angle in the exact same location as the stock motor uh, was originally positioned. So I'll likely have to trim the, the chain guard a little bit, um, but the pinion angle will be identical. Let me show you that. Okay, so here's the original motor and how it was positioned. And you can see where the pinion, kind of the pinion and chain line geometry on where the pinion sat. Okay, and then here is the new motor installed on the bracket. Okay, so here we have the new bracket installed, got the motor on it, and all tightened down. And this is what it looks like. So you can see that this motor is, um, it's moved forward. So it's positioned forward from the original mounting location. It's elevated by 7 sixteenths of an inch. Um, along with the two quarter inch uh, brackets. And then it's moved, shifted to the left. You can see how the two brackets uh, obviously don't sit square to each other. Um, and that gives us the proper chain line that's required. Let me show you that. So here's the chain line, okay? And then, you know, the motor is obviously squared, squared up in the chassis. Um, so here is what the original chain line looks like with the stock motor in its original placement and the, uh, the pinion angle, you know, kind of where the pinion angle sets. And then here is what the new motor looks like. And you, as you can see, the pinion location is nearly identical to, or should be exactly identical, to the uh, stock location. Obviously, this chain is too long. I got to shorten it. Um, I'm going to try to fab up the chain tensioner as well. I may need to build another bracket that goes on here in order to kind of hang the chain tensioner in the right location. I don't know if there'll be room for it, but I'll, I'm going to give it a try as well. Okay, so here's the stock chain tensioner, and it just doesn't look like it's going to be able to work in any way. I mean, aside from the mounting location being off, you know, I can build a bracket to relocate the mounting location, but this motor housing is just so big, you know, and along with the larger uh, sprocket down here that there's just not room in here. There's not really room like there was before to run the chain tensioner. Even if I were to build a bracket that kind of flips it around, there's just not a lot of, there's just not enough room in here to run it. 
Not only that, given the fact that this motor being a direct drive has such a small sprocket on it, on the pinion side, you know, in order to get the right torque and the RPM that I need, or the speed that I need, I gotta run a really small sprocket up here. Um, there's just, there's not much play in the chain for the tensioner to take up. You know, it would be super close together. So I guess I'm just not, I'm gonna try it, you know, my only option here is to try it without the chain tensioner and see, I'll just run it direct so the chain will look something, you know, something like this. I'll run it direct, and of course it'll have a chain guard on it, um, you know, for safety purposes. But we'll try it direct, and you know, with an eight millimeter tooth here, you know, we got enough depth to, you know, really prevent this chain from jumping. But we're gonna we're gonna have to um, modify the chain and run it direct. Okay, so here's the final chain setup. Okay, so no chain tensioner. They're not going to fit. Um, I got the chain all set up. It's an 8mm chain. You can see it's set up pretty good. It's got a little bit of play, but not nearly enough that it's going to jump sprocket. Um, it's actually a nice amount of, amount of play. Uh, it's all lubed up and everything. So I'm on a 10 tooth, 8mm pinion. I'm on a 54 tooth sprocket. And before I put the chain tensioner on, I do have to do a little bit of a modificate, sorry, not the chain tensioner, the chain guard. Before I put the chain guard on, I got to do a little bit of modification. This motor housing is so much bigger than the other uh, stock motor that the chain guard, the chain guard fit very snug, you know, around the motor that I need to dremel it out a little bit. Um, so I'll do that. But before I go and mess with the chain guard, I want to make sure that this gearing is all set because um, I might, you know, need to change the gearing around based on if it's too fast or it doesn't have enough torque. That's about the amount of flexibility you have. Uh, so I might change it around. I got extra chain length as well. I got a chain, nice chain tool that I picked up. Uh, looks like the chain breaker tool that works for eight millimeter. And so you can basically break down this chain to you know any size that you that you need. But it's all hooked up. Here's here's what it how it runs out. <laughs> So it runs out pretty good, and I'm going to put the body back on and put it back together, and we'll run that out and see if it needs to change gearing. Okay, so I decided to do the chain guard anyways. When I was test fitting it up here, I noticed there's enough room down at the bottom of this chain guard for the main sprocket, the drive sprocket, um, to have some, some you know flexibility. So even if I change the gearing around and I end up putting a bigger main sprocket on it or drive sprocket, the chain guard's still going to fit. Like there's there's enough room in there. So I went ahead and just decided I was going to make this modification now. So what I did is, uh, you know, it's just a plastic unit, all one piece. And the original motor, you can see a little bit of the flange here. The original motor basically went about in this location. But given that this motor is so much larger and it's, you know, the motor housing is centered on the on the drive you know, uh, uh, output shaft here, whereas the other motor it was all offset because of that funky gearbox. Um, I had to basically cut the whole top, you know, out of this chain guard with just a Dremel because uh, the, the, you know, the new motor's up in here. Okay, and then the final product with the chain guard on, you can see the chain guard is all bolted up in its normal location and it covers the whole new motor, which is pretty cool. So all that effort <laughs> all that effort to reposition the upgraded motor so that it fits in the same location as the original motor was really so that this chain guard and the original drive you know the drive line or the chain line geometry would all be be the same as it was stock cool so let's throw the body on and go take it for a spin Okay, so here's the finished product. The chassis is all complete. The motor is in. The new bracket that I made to mount the motor is all tightened down. The chain guard modifications I had to make to it looks good. It's all installed. I rotated the tires. <laughs> and then up front, you know, this was my prior work. There's the three 12 volt, 12 amp hour total of 36 volt uh, battery in the tray that I made for it 
and then the 36 volt controller. So that's it. Time to uh, install the body back on and give it a rip. All right, so just got back from a test ride and it runs out really good. So that's a nice motor. It's smooth, it's got good response. But I will say the work is not done. So the gearing, as I suspected, is off. It's too long-legged, or the gearing is too tall. Um, with me on it, I'm an adult, about 180 pounds. It's uh, slow to get going, right? So it doesn't have enough torque. And then it's way too quick, uh, top speed, top speed-wise. So what I need to do is change the gearing, which I had suspected I would need to do that anyway. Um, so I have on there now a 10-tooth pinion on the motor and a 54-tooth sprocket on the drive axle. Uh, so there's a couple options for me. I could drop down. They make a 9-tooth that fits this motor flange. So I can drop the pinion down to a 9-tooth. And then I can move up from a sprocket standpoint from a 54. I think the next size up is a 63. Um, and that should fit just fine within this chain guard. They do make a 72 tooth sprocket, which is really big. And that um, probably wouldn't fit and it might be overkill. So I'm going to try the 63 tooth sprocket. And I might buy a nine tooth pinion just for the heck of it. Uh, gear that down a little bit and that'll lower the top speed and give it some more torque um what i do like about the, the motor though unlike the stock one that has the uh gear drive on it is when you overvolt that stock motor with the gear drive it's got way too much torque right so uh, initially when you first get on it right it it launches out of the hole and it and with a light child on it um you know, my son's like 45 pounds. It's way too much torque right off the get-go. And it always jerks his head. You know, he wears a full-size dirt bike helmet. And it jerks his head back. And, you know, he's he's since learned how to kind of feather the throttle. But, you know, this, this is a five-wire throttle. You know, there's just not a lot of, <laughs> you know, variable uh, speed there. Um, so what's nice with this is, you know, given that there's no gear drive... It takes a bit for that motor to get to get up to speed, so that immediate um, throttle off the line is a little softer uh, with this. So that's going to be good. So let me change out this gearing and uh, check back in. 